Good afternoon. So many people. I'm surprised, actually. We use DSC every day, more or less, every day. Oh, that's actually quite a few people. Who does end-to-end -end provisioning with DSC? <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, four. <laughs> it's not many. I'm not surprised. Who struggles with configuration data? Yeah. So everyone else has a solution? I'm really curious now. All right. So just just a warning. Uh, yesterday my laptop died, so I had to recover it. So I had to redo the slides because I lost the slides. But if you have any questions, so it's it might be a bit quick or it might not be. I don't know. But uh, if you have any questions, just ask. Raise your hands. Shout. Throw something, and then and then I'll try to answer. Okay. So the agenda. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's more about the journey. So. I don't know if you've heard of policy-driven infrastructure, or maybe you've heard infrastructure as code. And, and this is where it all starts when you do configuration management. Um, you have to define your infrastructure as code. And people usually start by, OK, what's the difference with scripts? I have scripts. Script is code. I deploy my infrastructure with a script. and I run the script, it deploys it for me. It's good enough. So. Policy-driven infrastructure means you define upfront what is the state, the end state of what you want, the infrastructure you want, uh, composed in services or different abstraction layers, and um, on this is your policy, and then your system, which DSC in this case, eventually converge to that state, which is why desired state configuration. So this is about the principle, and I believe the principle is really important, because if you don't get it, you can make bad choices at the beginning. And I've learned the hard way, so please don't do my mistakes. Um, so DSC is very prescriptive. That means you can do things in one way, and it's not that flexible in some ways. And some people say, well, all the tools are more flexible. Chef, Puppet, more flexible. And it's true, but it's a risk. By being, um, by being less prescriptive, more flexible, they allows you, it allows you to do um, changes later down. Not, not define a policy and then converge to that state but sometimes like you can do something a bit too late and that means it's obscure when you see your policy document and dsc is missing a few bits um and in case like if you have a dsc configuration you most of you are probably familiar um you it's a state but it doesn't let you know if you configure this then configure that if you configure this file for this service well, then restart that service. You can't really do this. Either you restart every time, or you have to write your own DSC resource, and then you need to handle this. So this is one of the big and, and limitation of, of DSC. I believe the team knows it, so, so we'll, see, we'll see when they're going to fix it, because everyone is screaming a bit about this. But some of the um, attractiveness of, of Ansible or Chef Puppet. Sometimes it's not about the implementation, it's about what it's about the implementation, what people are doing with it. Uh, sometimes it's risky because it's so flexible. Say, well, I can just do that at runtime, get this information from a manifest, from whatever, and then at runtime I will change it. So that means you don't know upfront what the configuration is going to be, and you need to make sure that. So it's it's hitting away um, some of the configuration. So everyone started with a. The blog post probably like separating what from where. So this is a technet this blog, and this is the basic information. Okay, this is DSC, and this bit is this is data, and this is how you split data. So I just took a screenshot of exactly the uh, the, the example they've got. On you can see you've got an hash table with all this information, and um, this is good and this is good principle to start with. It's like yes, okay, this is the this is hash table. I need to have all nodes. All nodes need to be an array, and then I can have pretty much anything, uh, non non data on pretty much anything under this. But all nodes on the nodes as a table is what you need to have at the bare minimum. But this is a good example to get the principle across. But who's having one big file with all the config data in it? No one. You do? Well, you do if it's, so if it's small, if it's small deployments, it's okay. Yes, as soon as you start to scale this, 
it's going to be very more difficult to say to add. And then the more, the bigger it is, then you want to split it. So there's many ways to split it, which I might cover in a bit. But I'd, yeah. And then in the configuration script, you just consume those information with variables like the PowerShell where we say it's very, very easy. So this is this is a nice example. You have you have this information there, and you just resolve it in there. Quite simple. You have a node. You have specific data for a node. There you go. Was, so then the problem is sometimes in the field you need to do to scale up. You need to be able to handle this. This is an example. Uh, I don't know. Who's managing more than 100 nodes with DSC? Not that many. Who, who thinks in the next two years they're going to they're going to manage more than 100 nodes? Yeah, that's probably why you're here. <laughs> so. So if you have 2,000 nodes, 10 sites, more environments as well, you want to have a dev staging or you want to have a lab or you want to have some of the things, the, the, the description of, of the, what's in there is the same, but it's different environment with some specifics. And then you want to have, like I call it service, some other call roles, it depends on the tools you use and on, on how you, do those con you name those concepts. And then uh, you want to be able to abstract the resources you use with the services, services by that definition, which is a role. Let's let's call it a role. Everyone understand role? Okay, this machine is an application server or web server. Okay, so it's got IAS. It's more specific. It's got this website. So this is very well defined role or service. You want to have a service in each site. Remember, we've got ten sites, exactly the same information, same configuration, but then you need to have it in in all the ten sites. And then the next day, by the way, we've added a new site. So that means you need to be able to abstract the services, the deployment of the services with the data, the node data. You don't want to rewrite this 2,000 information, like you don't want to rewrite, sorry, um, the role for all the nodes that needs to be in those services. So you can say, well, yeah, you can abstract this data. So there's different ways to go on on something that people are really familiar with is the name configuration. And I try to really, really oversimplify it, but one configuration name is one morph. Then multiple nodes pull that morph. That means the configuration is shared across all of those. Then how do you, if you have this, how do you configure, or, or you, do you define def, uh, specific information for that node? Um, as an example, like a VM ID, I want to spin up a VM ID on the, that through DSC, and I want this information to be um, to be specific to that node. But I don't want to. Um, add, I can't really do this with only one more because you can't share the same VM ID, for instance. So then you've got workarounds, which is just not use DSC for that. This is value scenario. People just use orchestration kind of tools, maybe orchestrator. Or I, I don't really know this area. But uh, people just use this provision the machine, and then when the machine is up, they just go and say, okay, no, your configuration is going to be X, web server. This is fine, but that means you don't really have end-to-end, -end, and then you have different, maybe different source of information, different um, source of truth, and, and sometimes you just want to use DSC for managing your resources as well. So then some people say, well, in that case, we can do partial configurations. We're going to define a different configuration, and then we're going to assemble them together later at runtime environment, and then uh, they will be able to pull one more from here, one more from here, and having another more from here, and that's going to make compose your system configuration. There's, there's a risk, and, and Steve Morosky had a very good blog post about it. Um, and you see it's quite tough on this. I think it can solve some problems, and there are some use cases. It's always the risk, again, of, of going to a pattern which is not really scalable. And then you have the risk where you have two morphs with one conflicting state, and that means one is setting, uh, one is setting I don't know, the, um, the um, uh, power mode for a server, the other one is setting for another thing. One is configuring the OS, is meant to, and the other one, the SQL server application, and then they want to write on the same settings in the OS. And then there's going to be conflict. One's going to do something, then the next morph is going to be applied, and they're going to revert it, for instance. So you're never going to get the right thing. And you can catch it, but this is just getting painful. 
And then that means you have two sources of data, of information, which is, this is the information for the morph, which defines the morph. This is another one. And sometimes people split the teams that do that. If you try to do DevOps and say, well, do DevOps, sorry. And then you say, well, we want to do DevOps. We want to communicate better. But this team is going to be handling that name configuration. This is the team, another name configuration. Then you have a big risk of not communicating enough and then override the other one. And then at some point, you need to integrate everything. And then when you look at the configuration of the server, you need to get this information from both sources. So this is the problem um, of partial configurations. It's got some cases. It's not necessarily bad, but be very careful about it. It's probably better if you have, as I said earlier, one policy document what, which tells you this is the definition of your infrastructure, and you can find every information in there. And it compose when you compile the morph, and it's going to create one morph, but it's going to get the information based on data, and the data being specific to that node, but also generic to the service it uses. So we want to have a way which is flexible to be able to get the data, but not repeat the data over and over again. So, so yeah, that's why it relates to configuration data, is if you've got different sources of information, then the, the data you do to compile those more is in different places, or risk to be in different places. Not necessarily, but that's a risk. So, how to store and manage config data. We're using PSD1 files on solely PSD, only PSD1 files. Another one. We're using database, like any kind of database, yeah, do like database, web service, um, like this kind of data store, okay. And we manage data uh, with custom scripts, like having your scripts, pulling stuff, yeah, automatically. Yeah. Okay. There's a few. No, like that was about three. I would expect more if you're doing this. Um, so then. How do you see, as in, you want, to, you want to have the information, you want to be your infrastructure to be self-documented, right? You want to have something, which is why we use a TSL in DSC, is like, I want to have a clear view of what is the state. But at the same time, you want to abstract, you want to have the data, and, and you want to have the data also visible, so then you know exactly which configuration is doing what. And, and having that in a, in a database, for instance, it's good because it's very easy to to pull on, on, on to manage, because we know how to do this, we've been doing this for a long time, but then it's harder for people to contribute, to have, um, to have versionings, and it's, kind of, it's not impossible, it's just, it's just a bit more effort. It's not a bad solution, it's just a different solution. So some people do that very successfully. I don't know, there's, at the PS Summit they were talked actually by, I um, can't remember his name, from uh, Ticketmaster in the US, and um, this is roughly what they do, and um, they have a full repo uh, on GitHub for this. I will send the link at some point. This is interesting. I believe for very, very high scale, that could be better than some other solutions. But, uh, but I think it's a difficult one to implement properly for your environment. Any questions so far? Yeah. So back in 2014, Steve Marowski did a presentation at a peer summit in the US. And he just touched a bit on the tooling around, and he had this tooling that he created. But like no one really picked it up, and Steve stopped using DSC because he went working for Chef. At that time, he was at Stack Exchange. And then uh, Dave Wyatt used DSC, uh, DSC at that time. And then um, he added a bit more to, to this tool. And um, on that kind of got lost. And actually, it's, a, it's in the repository in PowerShell.org uh, under DSC. Uh, I'll just send you the link. And um, it's still a bit lost. It's like part is in the development branch, the other one is master, and no one really reused it. So I started looking at it and I said, well, the concepts are good. And I rewrote it to be a bit more uh, WMF5 and this kind of thing. So I just, you know, cosmetics. And I said, well, that's interesting. So let's have a quick look at this. Maybe. Yes. That work? That work. So I'm going to go first. Yeah. Can everyone see it? Is it clear at the back as well, or should I try to make it bigger? Again? Is 
Sounds good. Let me just turn on. Need to do that. There we go. All right. So, sorry, this is the module, but this is what we want to see first. So this is the way they started to structure it. So they said, well, we can define everything in files on having information for my services, as I was saying, and then you can have different, like all the, all the set of information, which is all nodes, credentials, services, start data. So I think that was a really, really good module. And then you have, you have this data structure on the idea is this is the most specific. Credential is a kind of separate one. I'll, I'll get to that a bit later. And then you have um, you have services and you have site, site data. And the idea is there's a hierarchy for those, which is all nodes is the most specific. Then you've got um, a site data, which is a bit more specific, and you've got services, which is really the most general way. So like you define one of your services, the data for one of your services, and then this is, um, I will go to one actually, it's going to be a good example. If I go to, let's say if I go to DSC2 server as an example. It's quite hard in that resolution. <laughs> so, should we do this? So this is the data they've got for a DSC pool server role, right? And that means a node can inherit this information by saying, okay, I'm of role DSC pool server, and then they can just inherit from that information. And then they will just inherit from all this data unless there's another layer more specific, like site or the node, which overrides this information. Make sense? So that means they can say, well, the top layer is DSC pool server. All my DSC pool server will use this data, and this data is going to be static in that file. It's only one file for maybe hundreds of servers. In terms of DSC, probably not hundreds, but like a few. And, and they will say, well, all of this is going to inherit from this information. And, um, and, and only if you, over, if you want to override, like for instance, the configuration path, then you, you have to specify it at other layers. So we'll see another layer where it's overridden, and it's going to be the like service. Actually, that was, I wasn't in the node, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, so that's, the, sorry, that's the service, which you can see the configuration path here which is overridden at the service level for the node, which is here. So let's see how that works. So the idea you just load the module, then you need to load the configuration data. So in my variable CD, easy. And then I'll just show you roughly what it looks like. So as you can see, you've got those information. This is a hash table, and then um, the all node is what you all know. So it's a it's um, an array of hash tables, and then you've got those other uh, set of information with services, which one we saw, and then uh, site data you've got here. So we will set node to a node because this is when you run your configuration automatically. It pass when you pass the configuration data, it automatically. Um, extract the nodes, and then you run each, you, you run the configuration document per node. So this is the node information, and this is the way the uh, data is structured. Make sense? And this is for just the site data. I want to see the dev environment, or the dev site in this case. I want to see the services that are set and within that services, I want to go to the pool server. I want to see this data, uh, this property, and the value of that property. So that gives me this information. So I cleared up this. And then there's a tool that you can use within your configuration document, your configuration script. And you say, resolve the SC configuration property. You give the not, because it's one of the parameters you get when you run the DSC configuration. You can have the property name. And then the configuration data is what you pass as an argument, or automatically can resolve in parent scope. But at least it's clear like this. When you do this, it gives you this information, which is what I just, which is what I show you with that 
that is resolving for the more specific. I mean, this one is specified for the old mode, the AC plus A. And then you can have other resolution behavior. So this is the same command, only this different. It, goes, uh, it will go through the hierarchy of information, and it's going to pull every time there's an override. So it's going to look at the most generic, and then the most specific, and all the way through the layers. And then you can merge the information of the stack. Make sense? So that's it for this one. I will show you. So this is a um, so this is a configuration script. Sorry. This is a configuration script, and this is this is the same way as you used to do uh, all nodes where, and then you go through every node, and then you can resolve some information. Which in this case, it resolves to let me just right. It resolves to the member of service, which is defining from every node, let me get this one, like VM01, you can see that the member of service is there. So on this case, which is not necessarily a good principle to follow, but you have you have two roles, or two services, I'm defining it that services. So it inherits from the SQL server, or inherits from test. I believe this is the kind of things you can't really do with Puppet, if I remember correctly, because you have you have one class that you you can is like a role you can only inherit from one role, but there are other ways to get more data into that role because within that role you can have different features. So this is one way of doing it. So that means when you when I go back to uh, the configuration script, yeah, it will resolve if it's a member of that service, then it will it will um, it will do this. It will get the node names, and for every node names, it's going to do this. And then this is what we want to show. This is um, quite static information, so there's no config data needed there. Yeah, you could. And this is is really not going to show properly with that resolution, but this is the idea. This is the comment I showed you. We say, well, use that property, and then res resolve that property. And I want to see all values, but only uniques. So this is the way you can merge data. And after that, you can reuse either directly this one, like I do here with the join, or you can resolve single values and put them directly into your DSL. And at the same time, you can use a default version. So this one specifically, it looks at the property, which is registration keys path. So you know in DSC, you need uh, the new DSC, the DSC v5, you need to set up a, a registry no, sorry, registration keys. This is to say where to look for that file. And then it configures it automatically when you spin up your new DSC to serve. So the idea is this is, the node you can override it. You can say, well, for this specific node, I want to use that path. For the generic ones, for everything else, I use the one which is in the, in the services definition. And then you can have it as many times as you want, and you can set up defaults. So this is the way. There's aliases, but uh, I, I don't want to use aliases to make it more obvious. Make sense so far? Yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. So then the next question is what what others do? What are the other um, systems in use for representing the data? in Chef, Puppet, and, and the other tools. Well, those two especially, that's the one I focused on. Chef mainly because I asked uh, Steve Morowski to tell me if he had to redo his scripts, how would he do it? And he said, well, I would use something which is more like the data bag. So then I did look data bags. And then recently I looked at Puppet and then the way Yera works. Um, this is very interesting and then I get most of my ideas from here, which is, there we go. So, the ID when you create your data, mainly, so this is the error for Puppet. You want to write common data for most nodes, which is what we saw with the services defining everything. You want to override some values for missions located at 
like in, in specific ways, which that means this is the abstraction layers you build for your infrastructure. And then you want to override some of those values for one or two unique nodes. Like sometimes you want to have something which is specific. For a node specifically, you may want to change the thumbprint of a certificate or something like this. And that means this way you only have to write down the difference between nodes. Everything is very generic, but if you have to override something, you have it. And then imagine that most of the configuration data over time should be generic. And this is cattle via spec, right? You want to have a cattle, like everyone is of the same pattern. And then sometimes you need to manage exceptions, which is what you do when you override the information. So to decide which data source can override which, here I use configurable hierarchy. Ooh, that's something we can't do with uh, the async configuration data. So the one I just show you is, is limited in the, it's prescriptive in the way it distributes the data. You can't add an environment layer. Um, and when I was writing, I said, well, that's a bummer because I need to have a dev and test on maybe a lab sometimes. So that was a problem. And on the list can be a uh, static data source. Can be, well, that's one thing. I will cover that in a bit. So what DSC confusion data lacks of, which is the module I was talking about, the dynamic hierarchy, uh, looking at customization and uh, declaration, um, abstraction of the storage of data. This is another problem that uh, I, I can't remember if Databag supported, but Yera is good at. It's like it says the, the data is structured, but the backend, I don't really care as long as you define it. That means in Yera, you can have a backend which is NoSQL, or you can have files, which is YAML files, or you can have different things. So they have a way to abstract it to the DSC configuration system. So when they build, well, they don't really build them up, but if we were doing the same in DSC, we would build them up, and that would be completely independent of the storage of the data. It would just grab the data, do it, which is why some people do scripts, so then they can pull whatever information from wherever they want. And then you want to abstract the format of the data. So some people will like YAML. Some people just can't be able with the spaces in YAML and, and they just want JSON. So, or maybe you PowerShell people, you just want to use PSD1. So that's another problem. So confusion data is only doing PSD1 at the moment, except for the credentials, which I haven't talked about, which is like a PSD1 type of file with encrypted passwords uh, based on the DP API and specifically, it uses, um, no, it's a certificate base actually. And uh, this is using protected data from Dave Wyatt. It's a very good module for any encryption. It's like a, it's a very good module. And things you can do. So how do we present hierarchical data? Because this is the pain I went through. It's like, okay, we need to have this. We need to abstract the storage. But how can we represent it? So um, Jeff Resnova actually mentioned Simplex. Uh, Simplex is really good when you, so, Everyone knows what a PS provider is? Not that many. Okay, PS provider is, is, a, is a way to represent data um, very much like a, a file system. So the file system is hierarchical data, and then you can uh, go through, get the content of an item, uh, of an item and, then, and then you know go through like you would a file system. This is what you have with the registry. HKLM, you know, column, backslash, and then you get in there. Well, this is, this is a provider in PowerShell. And you can have many provider, and Simplex is a way for you to define your provider. Otherwise, the only way you can do this is uh, doing it in C sharp. And I tried. <laughs> and it's actually possible in PowerShell. Uh, it's a, it's a very hacky, and you don't really want to do it. So I actually asked the PowerShell team, okay, if I want to do one, what's the best way? And they say, well, for now, use Simplex. I know with what Jeffrey said, I understand why they're working on making it simpler. So it's good, but then you have an issue which is uh, that doesn't abstract everything. You can have uh, data which you can access, but then you still are, you're still very dependent on the type of data and the format of the data after it. So in the end, PowerShell variables. The good thing with PowerShell variables is, well, if you think about the dot notation in, in object-oriented programming, it's like you have something dot something dot something which is a hierarchy. You have your root objects, and then you can have any trees, any branches, and any leaves you want. And then you can play with this, especially with the underused feature, which is the script property of viable. So you can have a property which is actually running a script, say, fetch from database. 
fetch from a file, from fetch from any type of file. So this little idea, I just went and I started uh, writing data, which is very recent, but I believe that solved quite a few problems. So, dun, dun. I'm sorry, but that's going to probably look a bit small. That's nice. So, let's keep doing this first. So, the idea of datum is very, very similar to Yera. You would define, so in, in the chef environment, they call these data bags. Um, you define your structure, and within the structure, you've got different bags of data, and then you define how you want to, what driver you want to use, or the provider in that case, which is a custom thing. I just use the module name and then the type, and then I just bundle that together. It's still very early days, but uh, this is a way to use any type of provider. So if you want to write your provider, you just plug it in, and then it should just work. So that means this is, I use the file providers here, but you could have a database provider or something very custom to whatever you do. Redis, for instance, which is probably something I'll look at at some point. And then you give some options for that provider, in that case is the path, and on the name you want to give to that data bank. So you start with your variable, your root variables, and then you will add to it um, structures, which is uh, all nodes, which is the first property, say the time of the property, roles and other property. And that means you can define any structure, and you can define as many as you want, as different as you want, and, and it's, it's more flexible. Then the second bit is the lookup system. I would say is can you nest? Um, it depends on your provider, mainly. And then this doesn't support at a high level yet, but I'm, so I'm not sure you need to, because usually those are already nested. So you can have folders, subfolders, which is already a, a, a kind of nesting structure. Yes, and to do this, I would not nest a bit. I would just create different entries and then that was what I was about to show, is the way you resolve. And this is the resolution precedence. That means you can define everything, uh, all the data and the way you access the data. And that can be quite flexible. I've gone to that way, which is just using the current value. And this one is specifically just execute some code. And there's a, a slight difference. This one is returning the, uh, the property. And that one's from a list, for instance. Uh, returns uh, the node that this code returns. It's a bit of specifics, but the idea you can you can be very flexible with this, and you can have correlations with others at the same time. And that means you define this, and you can change it the way you want. So you're not fixed of having one structure. You can have different structures if you want. So what does it look like? And okay. So the terminal looks. So I'll just run the beginning. I don't know. I'll just go from here. Can you see the terminal window at the bottom? Actually, I'm going to do like this. So I'll have to screw. Is it really too small? Yes, no? Ben, can you see? Yeah, it's okay. All right, so I just run this. So I'm just loading this YAML file. I use PowerShell YAML, it's quite nice actually. And I just get the content of the YAML and that creates me a PS object. So if I just show up this one, so this is the PS object it does. You've got just two things, residence precedence and then the datum structure. So then, I just create that structure for, for the datum. So datum, I use it specifically for uh, DSC configuration data, but I see many other use cases for this. And the idea is you can have data bags for different kind of scenarios. 
on one I have in the back of my head is if you know tug, then maybe tug could be driven by the same data structure, that means the same source of information. I'm just gonna mop it up, but. Um, and then you define your configuration data. I just extract it as DSC expected. And then I put my data next to it. Um, right. And this is the configuration data as it looks now. Slightly different. But you still have your all nodes with hash table, a collection of hash tables. So you've got uh, an array of hash tables. And then you've got your side data, your all nodes, and your worlds. And the file provider, as you have here, is the provider I was talking about when I define datum, column, column, file. So let's just clear that. And this is when we start going down the rabbit hole. You find the information, and this is structured data. And all of this is based on files that I'm going to show you in, in a second. And then I'm just going to load that into one node. And now I can resolve, I will resolve one property. So similarly to what we've seen with DSC configuration data, this is doing exactly the same principle, but it's a bit more flexible because you can define all your structure and then it abstracts everything into a variable. So doing this, this is doing from one node and then I'll do similar things that we've seen earlier. I can, find this I can do the same, but with the search behavior of all values. And that gives me the information for all the nodes. So I'm going to show you now the data how it looks like. And because it abstracts. That's not the one. Can you see anything special in there? So the main point is no, we have an abstraction of the storage and the hierarchy of the storage and the format. This one is a YAML file. This one is a PSD1 file. And everything in the end is a variable with an object and properties in that object. And then you have your hierarchies. That means whatever format you have, whatever the, uh, the storage, backend storage you have, you can just have hierarchical data that you can pull, or then you can abstract this to, to the user. So one day you can use files, and then you say, well, I want to evolve. You just have to create the provider that goes along with your data store. And then you can just use exactly the same structure, the same module, and the same definition. To go back to the, what we said when we have 2,000 servers, but you probably don't have 2,000 roles. So in my opinion is when you have 2,000 nodes with little specific configuration, you may want to have your nodes into a database, because it's easier, and usually you have asset trackings and this kind of things. So maybe the nodes should go there. Then, um, the way you store it, it depends. If you use Redis, maybe you want to have JSON in it. Or if you use a SQL database, maybe you just want to uh, return a um, PS object or whatever. Um, it depends on the provider you write. But provider is really straightforward. It's just trying to get data in a recursive manner. Um, and then you can define as many as, as relevant to your environment. So for instance, uh, that one is pretty standard. But maybe you want to add another layer, depending on what, what you want. Uh, in that case, oh yeah, I've got side data actually. But maybe you don't want side data. If you have only one site, no need. You don't need to clutter, you just remove it. And I have just a few more points. So credential is data. The only difference is like it's security data. So you need to really encrypt it and make sure no one has access to it. And if you know how DSC works, uh, you want to get it and decrypt it as late as possible and not store it uh, if possible to disk and if possible just um, just never never store it and, and have it only a fraction second in your RAM before you compile your configuration mobs, your mobs. So if you abstract the storage you can pull directly from, from a vault like let's say a secret server. You can have secret server 
you create the provider for Secret Server, like using the um, Secret Server PowerShell module for this. It's probably, it's probably a bit of effort, but not that much. And then you can pull directly. It never goes to disk. Just when you compile, you just get this data from your provider. And if you store locally, if you really have to store locally, then use probably protected data, which, which is, um, so the provider is pretty much done. It's just a matter of um, importing what has been done in DSC confusion data to data. Something similar. Quickly, summary. Uh, confusion data is very important. It's the key. You've got the confusion scripts, but then you want to be able to reuse it as much as possible. So try to abstract your layers in your confusion data. Use override only on inheritance structure. You don't want to repeat yourself. You just want to override when there's a very good case and try not to because you don't want pets. And then make policy visible and accessible. People want to see what the configuration. If you want to, uh, sh between team or across teams, um, uh, share the, the load. Let's say you have a package list. You can put that the package list of certain type of servers. You put that into a git on its files, and they just have to update it. There you go. Managed it. Everyone can do a pull request, at least if you do this for developers, or then you can abstract another way. Give it a go. It's not published. It's in GitHub. But uh, if you think it might be interesting, if you, if you want to know things, like let me know if you want features, let me know. Maybe I would need it. Maybe I haven't thought of it properly. Will that make sense? Yes. If you have questions, shout. Is it high? Questions? Yes, obviously. Is there any way on this Yeah. It's a very good feature request. So, so the idea is, um, at the moment when you do this, you end up with having a different layers of the configuration data, but you don't have a view of what is directly applied currently to one node. So this is kind of the problem. But uh, it's. With this, it's probably, it, it's quite easy to do. So it, I haven't done it yet, but yes, it's definitely, yes. Exactly, yes. The only problem with that is because you have structured data, and it depends also on the properties you're calling, because some of them you want to merge them, and some of them you want to, uh, you want to just replace with the more specific. So that means you can have a big picture, but it's not going to be what is exactly used. Yes, yes. But that's a very interesting one, which is probably not this one. Yeah. And a good module for that, actually. You know what I'm talking about. Scribble. Any questions? No? Good, bad, good, good lunch, yes. <laughs> yeah, good lunch, I know that. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Thank you.